If you use Google Chrome for Mac, you can double click up in the gray area where the tabs are to make the window full. Always, no matter what size window you're looking at. You could do pretty much the same thing in Safari as well. Hi everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to show you my top 5 keyboard shortcuts for Mac that I think you should be using every single day. So the first one is obviously using command and spacebar to open up a spotlight search. You can do a lot from spotlight. You can even do math in here, did you know that? But you can search for applications. So instead of going to your applications folder, you can just type in say Keynote and then go ahead and hit enter and Keynote will open up for you. Now at the same time, we can also search for documents. So I happen to know I have some files uh, that have Google Trends in the name because I recently did a tutorial on Google Trends. So if I search Google Trends, you'll notice that they pop up there as well. So I don't really use the folders on my computer. I do to store things and I don't even know why because when I go to find them, I often just use Spotlight. So that is my number one keyboard shortcut. Is you don't have to go and click up here in the top right corner to the magnifying glass. You can just hit Command and Spacebar and jump right into Spotlight Search. My second favorite keyboard shortcut is actually a group of keyboard shortcuts, and that is taking screenshots on Mac. So with my website open here in Google Chrome, if I just press Command, Shift, and 3 on my keyboard, you'll notice that it takes a screenshot of my entire screen. We see a preview down here on the right, and if I just leave this here, it will disappear, and this picture will show up on my desktop. Now at the same time, I could click on this preview, and it opens up and uh, kind of gives me a a little window here where I could do some markup if I wanted to, uh, but to do anything more robust, I would go over here to this share icon and open it up in preview so I could do a little bit more. Uh, but you can mark this up right here and then you could share it, say like email or through messages. Uh, so that's taking a screenshot of your entire screen. However, you can take a screenshot of a portion of your screen by doing command, shift, and four. You'll notice that you get some crosshairs and then you can select the part of the page that you would like to take a screenshot of. And then a really cool feature is doing command, shift, control, and four. It also gives you the crosshairs and we'll take a little screenshot here. And you'll notice that when I do that, I don't get a little pop-up over here to the right. That's because this screenshot was automatically copied to my clipboard. So I could just go into say an email or maybe even like Keynote and I could paste and you'll notice that my screenshot appears that we just took. If you want to learn more about taking screenshots on Mac, I have a full tutorial on every single way to take a screenshot. I'll put it in the description of this video here on YouTube, so don't forget to check that out. Now my third favorite keyboard shortcut in Mac is actually just using spacebar. Now wait a minute you say, what are you talking about? Just spacebar, so that's not a shortcut, but it is. If you have an image selected, so you'll notice here are the screenshots we took, if I want to just take a look at this image without opening up preview and just seeing what it is, I can just select it with my mouse and then press spacebar. And I get a nice preview of this image. So I could actually just use the arrow keys from here to arrow to other files where I'm currently at. So you'll notice we're going to the next screenshot and we can just look at all of them. So that's a great way to preview images to see if that's the file that you actually want to work with before actually opening it up. So that's my third favorite shortcut, just using spacebar. My fourth favorite keyboard shortcut on Mac is using command and tab. So let's get a few things opened up here and I'll show you how this works. Let's say we're in Google Chrome and let's also say we have Keynote open. Now we're doing our work here in Keynote and we want to go back to Google Chrome. What's my fastest way to do that? Well, a lot of people might go down here to the toolbar and click on Google Chrome. But if we press Command and we hold Command and then press Tab, you'll notice that we can cycle through our currently open applications. So I could just stop on Google Chrome, then let go of the Command key, and boom, I'm back in Google Chrome. I can do it again to go back to Keynote, and we can go back and forth really, really fast. So I absolutely love that keyboard shortcut. I use it all day long. Now my fifth favorite keyboard shortcut is actually related to using Command and Tab, and that is using Command and M to minimize an application. So right now I'm in Keynote. If I press Command and M, you'll notice that that application is now minimized. And if I were to use my Command and Tab shortcut that we did earlier, and I go to Keynote, you'll notice that I'm not seeing the Keynote window because it's currently minimized. So alongside doing Command and M to minimize, you can also use the Command and Tab shortcut and land on the application that you would like to now maximize. With the Command key still pressed, you're going to press the Option key and hold the Option key and then let go of the Command key. And voila, 
our minimized window has now returned. So we could start using Command Tab to go back and forth real fast between Keynote and Chrome. No, I'm just kidding, but this is really useful. I've always used Command M to minimize, but then I would always use the mouse and go down here to the toolbar and click to open it back up. But like I said, I can Command and Tab back to Keynote, press Option, let go of Command, and there you go, Keynote is open again. So these are my top five keyboard shortcuts that I recommend you use every day if you're a heavy Mac user. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And if you wanna see more technology tips and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you for now. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.